Hello and welcome back to the QGIS Geomapping Masterclass, a free course offered by the GeoRGV community. This is the fourth lesson of the course and the main topic for today is mapping geological units using the free and open source software QGIS. I am Marcel, I'm a hydrogeologist and I'm the main instructor of this course. Let's start. Want early access to the latest lessons? Sync up for free to the QGIS Geomapping Masterclass on the Gscourse doc online and stay ahead of the game. As you can see, if you click over here, you are going to have access to the course that you can register and start learning. Today, we are talking about the fourth lesson of the course that is about mapping geological units. But just to let you know that the lessons five and six are already available if you register to the course. In lesson five, we are going to talk about the geological map composition, how to create a geological map composition, you know, very professional, as you can see in this image. You are going to learn how to do this kind of maps using QGIS. And also in lesson six, we are going to be talking about LiDAR and 3D geological model. We are going to process LiDAR data exclusively using QGIS without needing to use any external plugin or tool like LAST tools. In this case, we are going to use just QGIS to process LiDAR data. And also we are going to see how we can create a very good 3D geological model with the information that we created at the previous lessons. Then if you want to be ahead, just get enrolled in the course at gscourse.online. In the previous video tutorial, we already created all the geological contacts. And also we saw how to use the topology checker tool in order to know if we have any topological error on the information that we digitized. As we already explained, to use this tool is pretty simple. Just press this button over here select the layer where you have the dissertation information, then set up a rule. In this case, we want this rule. Press this button to add the rule. And then the only thing you have to do is press the option validate all. Then here is going to indicate where you have errors. In our case, as we said at the previous lesson, these errors are the expected one. The ones you don't want to have is errors on the intersection of the lines that you digitize. Because if you have errors, it is indicating that the polygons that the lines define are not perfectly close. And if they are not perfectly close, the polygon is not going to be created. And we need that polygons in order to create our geological units. Then the next step is the polygonization of the geological contacts. Then first we are going to remove this one. Let's go to take this rule. Okay. Let's go to validate again in order to remove the rectox. Now let's go to the, the search over here at the processing toolbox and look for polygonization. Polygonize is this tool over here. Then double click and select the layer geology contacts. And at the moment, we are going to leave a temporary layer. Then run and close. Now, if we select the layer polygons and then select the tool here to select the features, you are going to see that now when we select any of these features, they are independent. And now we can assign for each of these uh, entities or features uh, a specific geological unit. At the end, in this layer, we want to have the same uh, geological units that we have on the hard copy of the geology map. Are you still using spreadsheets for soil and groundwater analysis? If so, it's like you're operating with technology from the Mesozoic era. In that case, you're basically a dinosaur in the digital age. Are you ready to step into the AI era and leverage cutting-edge tech? It might be the perfect moment to explore GeoRGB's revolutionary tool for lab sample analysis. This online application is a game-changer, 
streamlining your process to slash hours and manpower in report generation, while dramatically cutting down on human error and data analysis. Simplify your workflow with technology designed to make your job easier. Discover how simple it is to elevate your lab analysis game. Click the link in the video description or head over to the GeoRGB community website at geescourse.online. Navigate to the Geoscience app section, select GeoSample Pro Analyzer, and dive into our easy-to-follow tutorial video. Your journey to smarter lab work begins here. If we are missing any geological unit in this layer over here, it is indicating that we miss to digitize any geological contact from the hard copy, or maybe there is a topological error. Then you have to make sure that you have the same geological units here in the polygonized layer and here in the original uh, geology map. Now the next step is to incorporate this layer inside of our database here inside of geology. At the moment we have these files, we have the geology contacts and the geology map and now we are going to incorporate the uh, geological units. How we are going to do that one? Then go here to the polygons, click on your right button, then go to export, save feature as, and here what we want to select is the geo package. Then here for the field name, look for the database, that is the geology one, this one, select this one. And now we are going to add a name for this layer that is going to be the geology unit or geological unit. Then the coordinate reference distance is good. And the only thing we have to do now is press OK. Now, as you can see, we have two layers, but we are not going to use this one. Then we can remove this one here. OK, and we are going to use this one. This one is the one that we created inside of our database. As you can see, we cannot see the new uh, layer that we put it inside the database. Then we can refresh over here. Refresh. Now, if we open, now you can see that we have the geological units. Now, what I'm going to do is to change the name because here it says geology, geological units. Then I'm going to rename this one, rename layer, and I'm going to leave just geological units. And also what I want to do, if you go to this layer, open attribute table, you are going to see that now we have just one field, that is the field one, and we want to add a new field that is going to be the units. Then to do that one, we can go here, expand this one over here, here, select fields and add new field. Then the new field, the name is going to be unit. It's going to be a text. And here you, you can put a the extension you want, zero, it's okay, then you, you don't have limitations. And okay. And now if you open the fields, you are going to see that we have the fit and we have the units. And if you open the attribute table, you are going to see that you have now this new field over here, the units one. Now we are ready to select each of these units and assign the name of the geological unit and also provide an, a specific color for the unit. You have to be aware that in geological maps, the colors used to represent the geological units are typically standardized based on the geological periods they belong to. Each color serves to quickly pinpoint the age and type of the rock formation. For instance, lighter colors may represent more recent geological periods, while darker shades could indicate older eras. This color coding is extremely helpful for geologists and students alike, allowing them to easily visualize and understand the spatial distribution and temporal relationship of the rock formations in a specific area. 
in our geological map, we have two different eras. We have the Cenozoic and we have the Paleozoic. The Cenozoic is represented for all these units started with the letter Q, that in this case, it means uh, quaternary. And the Paleozoic is represented by units designated with the letter D, that in this case, it means uh, Devonian. In this geological map, we don't have other periods. We have just the Quaternary and Devonian. And in this case, the Quaternary, the colors are going to be lighter than the colors that we are going to use for the Devonian. These colors at the Devonian are going to be darker. Now let's go to start with the names. Then select the layer with the geological units. And then if you go to the attribute tables, when you select one unit over here, this unit is going to be marked on the attribute table here. If we move on to the bottom, you are going to see that this unit is this one. If we move on to the next one, go again to the attribute table, look for that unit, you are going to see that is this one. Then what we have to do is open the edition for this layer. And now if we go here, we are going to see that this unit has this name. That's the name that we have to add in the attribute table. Then go here to the attribute table and add the name over here is QHCD. Then we can copy this one here. And now we can paste in, paste in the other units. Then we select this one, go again to the attribute table, look for that unit. Is this one over here? Then we can paste here. The same with this one. We have this one, this one, and this one, and this one are all the same. Then we can work on this one now. Select this one, go again to the attribute table is this unit over here then paste the name over here and we say also this one here is the same in this case the ideal scenario is to work with two screams then you don't have to you know it's going to be easy if you have two screams to work then is this one over here and paste over here with two screams, you don't have to go uh, back forward all the time because in one screen you have the attribute table and in the other screen you have the map. Then you have to select the unit and then go to the attribute table to change the name. But in this case, we have to go with one screen uh, back forward all the time, right? Then here we have this unit and this unit also is the same and also this one over here. Even here you cannot see this layer because we don't have a check over here if you select over here as we have selected the layer is going to be marked okay then as you can see if i click here and then i go to the layer again you're going to see is marked then again go to the attribute table look for that unit in this case is this one and paste the name over here and we say it's the same for this one here. Just let me double check. Yes, and also for this one over there. Go, the, go to the attribute table. This one, paste. And also this one here, right? Yes. Then go to the attribute table again and paste the name of the unit. And we have one more, that is this piece over here, is also this unit. Then go to the tribute table, and it's this one, and paste. Then to save the change that we did in this layer, just press the pencil again, and save. Now we can close this one. If we want to 
take the selection of this one, just press this option over here, and nothing is selected. Now, if we go here, go to properties, then now what we want is, you know, as we have the border in black color, we don't we don't want to have that one. We want to have a very thin line or even no line there because on the top of the geological units we are going to add the geological contacts okay then we don't want to have at the back one black line then what i'm going to do here is select this one make this line very very thin like 0 0.01 and also i'm going to put in a white color for example apply and now you cannot see the units right but if you put here the geological contacts on the top, like this one here, you can see now the contacts perfectly. And also you can still select it, the units, right? And now also we can add the colors to the units, then go to properties. And here we are going to select category size according to the units then classify and we add just one one unit that's because we have just one then apply and now it's applying the colors for the units that we change the name in this case as we don't want this color we can change the color go to properties select this one here Click right on your mouse and change color. Then here you can select the color you want. For example, in this case, I want a, I don't know, a kind of this gray looks good. Apply and OK. Now, if we want to create more units, we have to select the layer, the geological units, press the pencil again. And we have to do the same. For example, now we are going to do the QHT1. Is this one, this one, this one, this one? Let's go to do this one, for example. Then select the unit. Go to the attribute table. In this case, we have to open again. Open attribute table. Look for the unit is this one and add the name we say q h t one and we can save save and now we can add color for that unit then go here to properties then classify again now we have this one let's go to change the color for this one change color in this case, I want a kind of uh, soft yellow. Could be, for example, this one over here. And apply and OK. And as you can see, now we have this unit created. Now, every time that you add the same name to a different unit, it's going to add automatically that color. Let's go to see that one. Then open the edition again. Go here to the open attribute table and let's go to select one new unit that is going to be this one that we know is the same as this one. Then go to the attribute table, look for that unit, is this one, and add the name. We say it's QHT1. and save and close and if we take the this one here you're going to see that now both has the same color for example this one over here is the same as this one but now has the pink color right because we didn't assignate it any name to this one but if we go to the attribute table is this unit over here 
press the pencil to edit the layer. And here, this one is Q8CD. Then save. We deck select the feature, and as you can see, now has the color automatically. Now I'm going to add the colors for all the units, and then I'm going to show you the, the final result. Now I finished to add all the colors to all the units, and now what I'm going to do is add the labels to the units. Then to do that one, we are going to go to geological units, go to properties. Here we are going to go to labels. And here we are going to select single label. Then here we are going to select the units. And here we can give format to the labels. Then for the size, I'm going to add here a number seven. The color, I want a black color. The style is going to be a semi bold. Then in formatting, I'm not going to add anything and I'm going to add a buffer. Then select this option over here. The size is going to be 0 0.5. And the color is going to be Y color. This one over here, okay. We are not going to add any mass. No background, but we are going to add a shadow. Then select this option. And the numbers by default, that's okay. I'm not going to add any of these ones. And here we are going to make some modifications. In this case, we are going to add this option over here. And I'm going to leave these values by default at the moment. Then apply and OK. And that's the result. Here, cannot see really well, but when we prepare the print layout, you are going to see how it looks like. Now, the last thing that we are going to do is to define the plane orientation of the geological layers. It's known as the straight and deep. As you know, here at the map, we have some field measurements. This one, this one, this one's over here, this one, this one, and this one over here. And to do this one, it's not very intuitive in QGIS, then it is a little bit complicated, but you know, I'm going to show you how to do it. Then what we are going to do now is create a new uh, layer inside of our database. Then go to the database, new table, and in this case, we can call this one as a bedding. And we are going to add a field that is going to be the strike. That's okay. And also we are going to add uh, another one that is going to be the deep. And in this case, the geometry is going to be a point. The reference coordinate systems is the same as we are using for the project. That is this one over here. OK. And OK. Then we are going to refresh this one. And we have our new layer over here. I'm not sure if this layer has been added over here. I don't think so. Then let's go to add to the project. Add layer to the project is this one over here. Now we are going to add a plugin that is known as a azimuth measurement. Then go here and look for that one. This one over here, then install. And close this new plugin is adding over here, azimuth measurement. Now, in order to know what is the straight angle, then we are going to use this tool. Then click on the tool. As you are going to see, we have this panel over here. Then if we go to one of these symbols and we take the measurement from here 
to here, we are going to have an angle, as you can see here at the bottom, the azimuth angle, that is the angle with respect to the north. And in this case, it's 82. But you can measure from here to here, or you can measure from here to here. And as you can see, now the angle is different. It's adding 180 degrees more. In this case, as you can see, we have 261 degrees. But if we are measuring from here to here, we have 82 degrees. Then what angle we are going to take? The one is measuring from here or the one is measuring from here? Then we can use this rule over here. We have the cardinal points and we are going to assume that our symbol is rotating from the center, from here, and is moving in this direction. Then, for example, here, if we have this symbol over here, we know that the uh, straight angle in this case is less than 45 degrees. Remember that the north is zero degrees and we are moving in this direction. Then, for example, if we move this symbol over here, like this, we can think it rotates from here to here. We know that here we have, for example, 310 degrees approximately. And that's the rule that we are going to use. Now, if we move to our example, in this case, if we place the cardinal points over here, we can see that this one has been rotating from here to here. Then the angle we, we have to take is from here to here, that in this case is 261 degrees. And the deep direction is 42 degrees. Then with that information, we can go here to the bedding open the edition for this layer, select the points and add one point here at the center. Then here the stray, as we said, is the angle that we are going to calculate now. Then this, this, take this tool over here and we are going to measure the angle from here to here. That is two, 262. That's the angle we want to add here. 262 and the depth is the one sorry it changed the deep is the one we saw on the map that is 42 and okay now let's go to move on to the next one for example this one here is the same we don't want this angle from here to here because as you can see if you take this symbol and you project over here, you can see that that symbol has been moved all this uh, direction. A little bit less, right? Because let me see, it's like here, then it's going to be something. Let me take this one out. It's going to be something like this, right? If we project this one, this one, here is something like this. Then we have to take the angle from here to here. Then we have to take the measure from here to here on the map using that tool. Then take this one and measure from here to here. What is the direction? What is the angle? 255, and that's the angle we want to add. Then click on here, 255, and the dip is 59. Okay, now we can move on to the next one. The next one is this one. We have the same as before, right? It moves from here, rotate all these ones to here. It's a little bit more than two, 270 degrees. Then we want to measure this one, select the tool, this one from here, sorry, from here to here. 
286. Then select this one, click on here, and 286. For the dip, we have 70, 70 degrees. The next one we measure, we have, I think, the same direction, the same angle. 286, the same as the other one. Then again, select this one, click on the center, 286, and 34. Okay. Now, this one is a little bit different. In this one, we don't want to measure the angle from here to here. We want to measure the angle I mean, we want to measure the angle from here to here, not from here to here, because in this case, has been rotating from here to here. Then in this case, the angle is this one. One, one or two approximately. Then take this one. It's one or two. And the depth Deep is 89. Okay. And this one has been rotated from here to all this direction. This one is uh, a little bit more than 270. Then in this case, we have to measure the angle from here to here. And it is 266 or 275. That's the angle we want to add. 275 and dip 68. I'm not going to try to make an interpretation of this symbology, you know, the direction of the straight, the dip. I'm the goal of this course is not make a representation of the geological structure. The goal is just to digitalize all the information that we have from the field work on a digital map. That's the goal, right? Then for this one, it's the same as this one over here. We have to measure the angle from here to here because has been moving. No, sorry. This one has been moving from here to here. Then I have to measure the angle from here to here. I know it's a little bit confusing, but it's just a question of practice, right? Then from here, from here to here, I have 272. That's the angle I want to add. Then add the point over here, 272 and 75. Okay. Now we can save all this information that we digitized already, pressing the pencil again, save, and now we are going to add the proper symbology for these uh, symbols over there. Then go to properties, go to symbology, and here select simple marker. Then here we want to select phone marker. And here look for the phone related to geology that we downloaded the other day is this one over here with all this the symbols. Then go to the bottom here and select the symbol you want. When you put the mouse on the top, you are going to see what kind of symbol it is. In this case, what we want is this symbol here. Then select the symbol and apply. But as you can see, the symbol is very, very tiny. You cannot see anything. Then go marker, for marker again, and make this one bigger. For example, 5. Now, as you can see, it's bigger. You can go even bigger, 10. Also, what we want is to change the color for a black color. And another important thing is to put this one just at the center, okay? Then with these options over here, you can move the symbol to the center, right there. 
and apply and okay but as you can see the orientation is not good something we have to do something here then go again to properties select again this one and go to rotation to this option then click on here and here we are going to select the strike that's the angle direction or the azimut angle that we put for the strike then select this one apply and automatically as you can see this one is set up according to the angle we added on the strike for each of these uh, symbols and that's it for today we did already all the geological contacts we add the labels and also we learn how to do the symbology for the uh, strike and dip thank you very much for watching this lesson and see you on the next lesson where we're going to be working on the print layout for the geology map